Hi, once again welcome back to Obstetrics and Gynecology videos. Today we are going to see about the intrauterine fetal death that is death of the baby before the delivery. We know that really it's a painful situation and all should know all the people those who are planning for the pregnancy and those who become pregnant they should know the features of this intrauterine death and they should know what are the causes which are producing intrauterine death so that to a certain extent we can prevent such difficult situations. So let us move to the topic. Let us see the definition of intrauterine fetal death or IUD. If the death of the baby is occurring after the period of viability that is in India, the period of viability we are considering as 28th week of gestation. And if the death of the baby is occurring after 28th completed weeks of pregnancy, that condition we are occurring, we are calling as intrauterine fetal death. But as for the WHO, if the death of the baby is occurring after 28th week or if the, or if the weight of the baby is more than 500 grams, that they are considering as the intrauterine fetal death. But in India, when you are writing the definition, you just write as fetal death after the period of viability, that is after 28th week of gestation. The incidence of intrauterine fetal death is 35 in 1000 live births in India and in developed countries, it is 5 to 7, 7.5 out of 1000 live births. And the causes of the intrauterine fetal death include fetal causes, maternal causes, placental causes and unexplained causes. The fetal causes include 25 to 40 percentage of the total intrauterine deaths and the maternal causes includes 5 to 10 percentage. Placental causes include 15 to 25 percentage and unexplained causes include 25 to 30 percentage of the total intrauterine death. Now let us see the maternal causes. The maternal causes can be or uh, maybe the following obesity that may contribute to the intrauterine death or IUD, maternal age above 35 years, if the mother is having the habit of smoking or using alcohol or if she is having the habit of using drugs, if she got infections like malaria, syphilis, toxoplasmosis, all those things during the pregnancy and the maternal gestational diabetes, hypertension, thyroid diseases of the mother, if the mother is having anemia severe anemia or if she is having epilepsy it includes eclampsia also autoimmune diseases of the mother like systemic lupus erythematous rh incompatibility hyperpyrexia separation of the placenta multiple pregnancy and preterm labor are the contributing maternal factors that doesn't mean that in all these conditions iod will occur but these are the contributing factors or the risk factors in the case of mother now let us see the fetal causes. It include multiple gestation. In the case of multiple gestation, the chance for death is more when comparing with the single term pregnancy. And intrauterine growth retardation of the baby, congenital anomalies of the baby, infections, hydrops fetalis and birth defects. Hydrops fetalis means we know that it's a condition that is occurring due to the RH incompatibility. The placental causes include premature separation of the placenta, placental insufficiency that is if the placenta is not supplying adequate amount of oxygen, nutrient and vitamins to the baby, placenta previa that is if the placenta is located in the lower uterine segment, chorioamnionitis that is infection of the chorion and amnion and that is fetal membranes, premature rupture of the membrane, fetal maternal hemorrhage that is bleeding from the baby to the mother. All these conditions are the placental causes. Next, we can see the signs and symptoms or how to diagnose the intrauterine death of the baby. Mainly, we can identify it by assessing the symptoms. If the fetal movements are less or decreased, if the mother is not able to appreciate the fetal movements, you should suspect this. And if the mother is having abdominal pain, in all the cases of abdominal pain is not a symptom of IUD. But IUD is there, I mean, sometimes the lady will get the abdominal pain and there is a chance for bleeding per vaginum also. And if you are examining, if you are performing the abdominal examination or physical examination of the mother, you won't be able to see the fetal heart sound or fetal heart sound you won't be able to hear properly. And the fundal height, that is if you are measuring the height of the uterus from the symphysis pubis to the fundus, it will be less or 
sometimes it will be less when compared to the gestational age and if you are palpating the uterus the uterus will be flaccid and braxton hicks contraction that is irregular contractions of the uterus during the pregnancy that is not a uterine contractions that is occurring during the time of delivery it is irregular painless contractions of the uterus that also will not be there and actual cracking feel of the fetal head if you are just trying to hold the fetal head you will feel as like it's going to crack as like a actual actual for the confirmatory diagnosis we can go for the ultrasonography and in the ultrasonography also you won't be able to identify the fetal heart sound and you can see the scalp edema of the fetus and spalding sign will be there that is overlapping of the collapsed skull bones the skull bones will become collapsed and it will overlap that is known as the spalding sign and uh, hyperflexion of the fetal spine will be there that is known as the ball spine ball sign hyperflexion that is increased flexion of the fetal spine that is ball sign and you can see the presence of gas in the umbilical arteries that is known as helix sign so these are the things you can identify in the ultrasonography and even in the x-ray also you can see this and these things helps for the confirmation other investigations include cbc blood grouping coagulation profile you should take the coagulation you should assess all the coagulation parameters clehurs test that is a test we are performing to identify or detect the presence of antibodies in the maternal blood that is if in the case of rh incompatibility if uh, antibodies are there against the fetal blood in the maternal body that can be identified by the clehurs test and thyroid function test of the mother because already we have seen that if thyroid disorders are there means that leads to the intrauterine death so these investigations also you should perform along with this the complications of the intrauterine death include postpartum hemorrhage there is a chance for postpartum hemorrhage if the baby is remaining inside the uterus and there is a chance for coagulation disorders and psychological upset will be there for the mother and even for the family also chance for infections are there now let us see the management of iud in the normal cases if other complications are there not there you can just wait for one or two weeks but nowadays we are not waiting for two weeks you can just wait for one week maximum seven days and wait for the normal onset of the labor if the onset of labor is occurring and if it ends with the delivery of the baby it's okay otherwise after waiting this period if the onset of labor is not occurring spontaneously you just go for the medical induction of the labor for that you can give 5 to 10 units of oxytocin in 500 ml of ringer lactate solution and if placenta previa is there or if the mother is having the previous history of cesarean section or if the lie is a transverse lie in that cases you can think about the cesarean section and in the case of intrauterine death for inducing the labor already i told you about the medical induction but you should not think about the surgical induction you if you are performing artificial rupture of the membrane the chance for infection is more so you should not do the arm and already i told you that psychological upset will be there for the mother and family so you should give psychological support to the mother and family thank you for watching this video see you soon with a new video bye